This is um, one of the uh, biology triple science required practicals, and it's the decay one. Now, the whole point in this is to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of decay of fresh milk by measuring the pH. Right now, the apparatus. So what you've got to do is you've got full fat milk in a boiling tube. You've got sodium carbonate and you've got lipase solution. And I'll, do, I'll go through those exactly during the method. 250 centimeter cube to be as a water bath. Okay, so that is kind of represents that there. You've got boiling tubes, a boiling tube rack, 10 centimeter cube plastic syringes to measuring out the actual liquids correctly. A stirring thermometer. So rather than just the thermometer that you just put in, it needs to be one that you can stir with. A stop clock for time. And then creosol red, or the best one, the indicator is phenolphthalein. Right, and what that needs to be then that needs to be available as your indicator. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through the method. So label a boiling tube lipase. So I've got a boiling tube, right, and I'm going to label it lipase. Add five centimeter cubed of the lipase solution. Okay, so there's five centimeter cubed. I'll just put a five in there. Label another boiling tube. So I'll do this one in red, right, milk. Add five drops of phenolphthalein solution. So we're going to add our drops of it and five centimeter cubed of milk. So what's going to happen when the phenolphthalein then goes in? All right. Uh, then I've also, I mean, my measurements aren't particularly very good here. So there's five of milk and there's seven of sodium carbonate. With the phenolphthalein, what it should do then, it should go purple. Okay. Now, the reason why it then goes purple is because the sodium carbonate is alkaline. And what that does, it makes the solution itself go greater than a pH of 8.3. And what happens then is then over 8.3 pH, the phenolphthalein, the indicator, goes purple. Right, so we've got lipase, 5 centimeter cubed, we've got milk with sodium carbonate and phenolphthalein and it's like a purple liquid then what we do is this is going to look really terrible we put them both in a water bath okay and what we'll do is we'll start it off at 40 degrees c now once we've got them up to the right temperature at 40 degrees c we take one centimeter cubed of the lipase and we put it into there and then immediately start our stop clock because we've got a stirring thermometer in there, so we'll put a stirring thermometer in there, right? What we need to do then is we need to keep it stirring, right? To make sure that the actual liquids themselves are staying at exactly the right temperature and getting mixed up. As soon as it gets less than a pH of 8.3, what happens, it will become or decolorize. It'll lose its color. As soon as it does that, you record your results in seconds, and that is then the end of the experiment itself. So as soon as it loses its color. Record the time taken for the decolorization in seconds, then repeat the investigation for different temperatures. So you might do uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 20. Record your results in a table. Then the best way of then actually continuing this experiment itself is repeat each one Right, so repeat 20, repeat 30, repeat 40, maybe do each one three times and then do a mean and then plot a graph of it. So I've just gone through the method, then we just need to understand exactly what's going on. So what we've got is we've got a solution that's got the sodium carbonate, right, and it's got uh, the milk and it's got the phenolphthalein and it's greater than 8.3 pH. All right. Now, what we're doing then is we've got lipids in there and the lipids are in the milk. It's the fat in the milk. The lipase is breaking them down. And when it breaks them, it breaks them down, it breaks them into glycerol and fatty acids. And it's the acids in this that then reduce the pH. So as acids are then produced, what happens is the pH goes, let's say it starts at 8.9 and then it goes 8.7 and 8.6, etc., and as soon as it then gets below 8.3, the phenolphthalein then loses its color. That is then the point in which the actual practical is then finished. Now, let's just talk about variables first. So don't mess in class. 
So the dependent one is the measure, which is the time. Our independent is what we change between our practicals, which is the temperature. And then controls are things like the volumes of the solutions, like one centimeter cube of lipase and seven centimeter cubed of sodium carbonate. And what we'll then do is we'll get two graphs out. The first graph is rate of lipase activity and temperature. And what you can do is you can see that point there is probably around about 37 degrees C, which is body temperature, which is its optimum. And this other one, which is then directly from your results, where you've got time in seconds against temperature. And what you'll have is you'll have a graph that looks a bit like that. OK, and again, right, what you can do is you can work out the optimum by where it is at its lowest. Okay. Now, that is then the required practical for decay. Right. What you need to do is you just need to keep on playing that and you need to understand exactly what's then going on right, with the actual practical itself.